happy Sunday. I feel like I say that a lot. All right, we are gonna go ahead and do a quick review and then go ahead and get into today's lesson. First, we are gonna review that big picture question. Big picture question is what kind of helps us tie all of our stories together. So our big picture question this week was, what did Jesus teach when he was here on earth? Because that's what we've been talking about, all the different things that Jesus taught about. Jesus taught about God and his kingdom, and he taught that all scripture is about him. We learned about, the first lesson in this unit was we learned about the Sermon on the Mount. And we learned that sin begins in our hearts and our minds. And then that sin that we've been thinking about comes out in our actions. And Jesus challenged us to consider our hearts and our minds. Then we talked about counting the cost of following Jesus. We know that it's hard, but it's worth it. And last week, Jesus taught us how to pray. He taught us how to give him all of our troubles and all of our worries. All right, we are gonna play a little game. So before we play the game, we need to talk about what these words mean. So because you're gonna help me put some stuff in some categories. The first word is needs. Have you ever talked about needs in school? Like what do people need? People need. Food, they need a shelter, a place to protect them from the outside, and they need clothes. Food, shelter, and clothing are needs that people have. All right, and this word is wants. Wants are things that you don't necessarily need to survive, but they're fun to have. So needs and wants. All right, Let's see how far I can put these out there. There we go. All right, so we have needs, and we have wants, and I'm gonna have you guys, I'm gonna show an object, and you're gonna help me decide whether it should be a need or a want. All right, let's start out with something easy. Water. Where would I put water? Water is a need. You need water to survive. All right, what about a Nintendo Switch. Would a Nintendo Switch be a need or a want? That's right, it's a want. You don't need it to survive. It's just fun to have. All right, what about shoes? Are some sort of protection for your feet? All right, that's a need. Clothing, you have to have clothing, some sort of clothing to cover yourself, shoes to protect your feet. Let's see, what about Mr. Potato Head? Is that a need or a want? That's right, it's a want. You don't necessarily need a Mr. Potato Head in your life to survive. All right, what about candy? I have a superhero limited edition Hershey bar that I bought at Kroger. Is that a need? Do you need it? Or is it just something that you might want? That's right, just a want. It is food, but you couldn't survive on just Hershey bars alone. What about a banana, a healthy food? Would that be a need or a want? You're right, that's a need. Okay, this one might be a little tricky, but you have to let me explain it. So I know this is a toy, but it represents some place to live. Would some place to live be a need or a want? Some place to live is a need. You have to have some place to protect you from the rain and the snow. So a house or something is a, is a need. Boys and girls, today in our lesson, we are gonna be talking about things we need and things that we want. Did you know the Bible talks about those things? Boys and girls, I'm gonna have I gotta pick up a picture. People back in Jesus' time may have dressed differently. Their clothes may have looked differently than our clothes look. And they may not have had some of the things that we have like cars. And so some of the things about our lives and about the people who lived during Jesus' time some of them are different. 
But you know there's something that's exactly the same as people who live during Bible times and us today. And the thing that's the same is our hearts and our minds. Did you know people today and people in Bible times had the same needs we had? And they had probably different wants. Probably not a Nintendo Switch because they didn't exist. But I bet there were things that people in Bible times really wanted. Maybe like a better horse or more cows. Those would have been things maybe they really wanted. Just different. Boys and girls, today in our lesson, we're going to talk about two things that everybody struggles with. Grown-ups, kids, people back in Bible times, people today. We're going to talk about two words called greed and worry. Hmm. Greed, or maybe you, someone said, or may have said to you, like, don't be greedy. Do you know what that means? Greed means when you want stuff. Right, like gimme, gimme, gimme. Maybe like your sister gets a bag of gummy bears from the store and you ask her for some and she gives you like three and you're thinking, man, I kind of wanted more than three, thanks for sharing, and you just want more. That's being greedy, when you want more of stuff. Worry is when you think about stuff and you're afraid things won't work out. A lot of times people worry about things that they need. Sometimes people might worry if they have enough food to eat. Some people worry about if they'll have a place to protect them for the night, like a shelter. Some people worry that they might not have clothes or to wear or money to buy clothes to protect them. And that's why we have so many wonderful things around that can help people with those. And we can help people with those when we see people in need. That's what it means. When they need things, we can help them. Greedy kind of has more to do with wants. Like, I have some toys, but I just want more. Or, I have some candy, but I just want more. You want more of the fun wants. I bet you're thinking of some things right now in your life that you thought, mm, maybe I've been a little bit greedy about that. Or maybe some things that you have worried about that are needs. Today in our lesson, Jesus is going to talk about worry and greed, and he's going to talk about needs and wants, because those things have changed even over hundreds of years. Today our Bible lesson comes from the book of Luke. Now remember, all of our stories, all of summer and spring, have come from one of the four Gospels, because we're talking about the life of Jesus here on earth. Let's say those four Gospels together. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And today our story comes from Luke chapter 2. Or not two, Luke chapter 12. And in our story today, Jesus is addressing a crowd. Now remember, this was very common, and this is happening in a lot of our stories. Jesus is walking around from town to town, and more and more people are following him, literally following him around, because they're really interested in what he has to say. So every once in a while, he would stop and he would preach a lesson. Now, people who were his disciples or just anyone who was following him that wanted to learn from him would also use the opportunity while Jesus was talking and preaching to ask him questions about life. And that's what happens in this story. So Jesus is walking and the Bible tells us thousands of people. So a t I mean, I can't even imagine a thousands of people, maybe like, I don't know, like if you've ever crowded around at Disney World to watch a show, there's thousands of people all around and Jesus stands up and someone says, Jesus, hey, can you talk to my brother over there and tell him to split my father's inheritance or money with me? Tell him, Jesus. Hmm. And Jesus stops for a minute and instead of answering, well, instead of saying, all right, well, brother, split it with this guy, Jesus says something different. He says, watch out and be on guard against all greed because true life is not found in the things that you own. Now, I'm sure that is not the response the man asking the question wanted, but Jesus goes on to tell a parable. And there are lots of parables in the gospels and they're some of my favorite because 
And maybe because I like to teach and when I teach, I often tell you stories. Well, Jesus did the same thing. He was a teacher. And so in order to get a lesson or a point across to his disciples, he would often tell a story. Now, these stories didn't really happen, but they were made up stories that the people of the time would have been able to relate to. So here's a story that Jesus told about greed, the parable he told. He tells the man who asked the question. He said, listen, one day there was a farmer and this farmer planted lots of crops, all sorts. And that year he had an extra abundance of crops, more crops than he ever had before. So this farmer says, oh, yay, I have so many crops. I am going to tear down my old barns and build new, bigger barns so that I have room to store all my crops. Because, well, it's true today, too. But back then, if you had a lot of crops, that was worth a lot of money. So now he's excited because basically he has all these crops that will equal a lot of money and he's going to store them in the barn so he can sell them for years and years to come. And he says, now I can just relax and enjoy my life. I'm taking, I've done it. I've done all the hard work. And then Jesus says, but this man, the next morning, dies. And Jesus says to the crowd, you see, he wanted to keep everything he wanted for himself so his life was going to be easy. But he didn't even get to enjoy it because he died the next morning. Jesus in that story is talking about being greedy. Jesus says what the man should have done was to take the crops he needed for himself to provide for his family. And he should have given the rest of them away instead of spending his money to build bigger barns to store more of his crops. So there, Jesus talks about things that we want and greediness. He says, don't be greedy. And he warns us against greediness. All right, well, then Jesus turns to his disciples and he says this. So, he's, so now he's going to talk about things we need. Right? And the things we need and the things people in Bible times needed were the exact same thing. Food, clothes, and shelter. And Jesus says, don't worry about your life or your body, what you will eat or what you will wear. Think about the birds. Have you ever seen a bird? He said, do birds plant their own food? No. Yet God feeds them. Aren't you worth more than a bird? So Jesus talks about food there, right? He'll provide us with food. Jesus also says, think about the wildflowers. They don't work to make clothes. They are lovelier than a great king in all his fancy clothes. If God takes care of them, won't he take care of you? It's so true. I love flowers. My um, Mr. Edom's parents had some sunflowers and Lily and I cut some the other day. And I thought I would show them to you. Look how beautiful they are. And Jesus says, if God made these flowers so beautiful, won't he provide clothes for you to wear? These flowers are prettier, he said, than even a rich king's clothes. And every flower is so different, too. They're all beautiful to look at. Jesus told everyone, this is what you should do. You should seek first the kingdom of God. He said, sell your possessions and give them to the poor. He said, a thief can steal your treasure on earth, right? Someone could break into our house. They could take our TV. They could take all the kids' toys. Things, things we want are just temporary. They're here for on earth. But Jesus said, store up your treasure in heaven. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. And we're going to talk about what that means here in just a minute. Boys and girls, what was important to people in Jesus' time is also what is important to people in our time. It has not changed. The things that people love and the things that people think about in their minds are exactly the same. And Jesus talked about those today in our lesson. 
He talked about the parable of the farmer who just wanted more and was so greedy. And Jesus told him, and Jesus told his disciples that don't be greedy, don't just want stuff because you're gonna die and you can't take it with you when you leave. You should be more worried about helping other people than just storing up stuff for yourself. Jesus also talked about things that people need because sometimes people do worry about things they need. They might not have enough food or clothes or shelter. And Jesus told them, don't worry. Remember the birds of the air that God feeds? Remember the beautiful flowers that God has made? He loves you even more than those. And Jesus talks about things people need, and he tells them not to worry because God loves them so much. In that chapter is a verse, and the verse says this, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. What do you think that means? Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. It's a hard one. All right, I have a picture of a treasure box to help us remember what, and talk about what it means. Boys and girls, here's what it means. I want you to think about something that you think about a lot. Hmm. Did you know the things that we treasure in our mind and in our hearts, we think about a lot? Can you think of something you think about? Maybe two things you think about a lot. I've got something. Okay, well, whatever it is you're thinking about, those are the things that you treasure. Treasure means to hold close to you, right? And the things that you treasure are things that you want more of, or maybe things that you will spend a lot of time and energy trying to get, or spend a lot of time and energy trying to protect. Those things are your treasure. Jesus doesn't want our treasure to be here on earth. So if you've named something in your mind, like more toys, that's a thing. So if you're spending all your time thinking about more toys and how to get more toys and where you're gonna put all your toys, then maybe that's not the right thing to be thinking about. Or maybe you get angry if you think about someone taking your toys away from you. Are you treasuring them? Do you remember we talked about that word value? Things we love with our hearts and things we spend our money on are the things we value. Treasure sort of the thing, same thing. But treasure, just like doesn't have to be things, treasure could be people. Do you spend your time treasuring people more than you treasure God? Like maybe you care more about what your friends think about you than what God thinks about you? Hmm. God says that well, whatever our treasure is, whether it's good or bad, that's what our minds are going to be thinking about. And so he challenges us. Jesus says, don't treasure things here on earth that are going to go away. Remember the farmer who died and he couldn't take any of his stuff with you? The Bible says to store up your treasures in heaven. What does that mean? Boys and girls, all that means is to do things here on earth to show Jesus that you care about him and others more than you care about things that you want and things that you need. Could mean giving away some toys to some people that don't have any. It could be seeing a need that someone has and taking care of it. Like maybe you know a family that needs some new school clothes and you say, hmm, you know what? I could help with that. Or maybe you see a family that doesn't have enough food. Oh, the dog's barking because the FedEx guy is here. And you say that maybe I could help with that. That's what it means to store up your treasure in heaven and not here on earth. Hey, boys and girls. This is Max, and he is our dog. And we love him a bunch. He's a golden retriever. And he has been interrupting our lessons a bunch the last few weeks and walking in the background and barking at FedEx guys. Um, when I take my lessons for you guys to watch, Mr. Edom takes Xander, Lily, and Grace. Um, he usually takes them outside to play, or today he took them out to lunch, or sometimes I just wait and tape until the, um, they go to sleep at night, late at night. But this guy 
thinks he's my best friend and so he's always around and so he ends up being on a lot of our videos so instead of trying to worry about him barking i just thought we'd let him be in the video when we practice our verse see he just wants attention and love all the time all the time which is why if you see him in the back of our videos he carries stuffed animals around because he knows he's not supposed to have them they belong to the kids and he won't destroy them but he just carries them around to get attention <laughs> all right let's do our verse and we're gonna let max help us learn our verse all right let's read it and then we'll do the motions together let me make sure i'm on the right side now remember our verse this week or for these lessons is really important because it reminds us of all the things that Jesus has taught about, about not worrying and about not being greedy and about counting the cost of following Jesus and about making sure that we're not sinning in our thinking and that it's coming out in our actions. It's so much to remember. But this verse that we've been working on reminds us that God sent a helper. And that's what the verse says. He sent us the Holy Spirit. And if we ask and we pray, God will help us to remember all these things that Jesus has taught about. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to say John 14, 25 through 26 together. We'll say it once and then we'll do the motions once. All this I have spoken while I was still with you. That's Jesus talking. But the advocate, advocate means helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. All right, let's do the motions. John 14, 25 through 26. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate or helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my, ooh, no, the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you you. I hope you have a great week. I am praying for you. I am praying that you'll remember the things that we've studied and the things that we've learned and that the Holy Spirit will help you remember them as you go throughout your week. And maybe when you catch yourself being greedy, you'll remember that God wants us to share our possessions and things with others. And maybe when you find yourself worrying, you'll remember that God will take care of you just like he takes care of the flowers and the birds. I love you. I can't wait to see you in a few weeks. Bye, have a good week.